a lot of stuff we needed. Okay, welcome to the Board of Selectmen for November 28, 2022. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comment, Mr. Haggerty? You know I always do, Mr. Chair. You do? But this one's, this one's quick, I promise. You say that every week. Yeah, I know. Well, I just want to uh, extend to everyone in Avenue that I hope everyone had a very safe, healthy, and happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving, uh, and looking forward to uh, the Christmas and Hanukkah season coming up. Uh, <coughs> but a uh, friendly reminder of the hazard uh, mitigation survey available on the town website. Residents and property owners are encouraged to participate in a survey about hazard mitigation. Uh, it's right on the uh, front page of the town website. Oh, thank you. You gonna start over? No, I'm not gonna start over. But I, I <laughs> no, I'll, I'll uh, friendly reminder of the hazard mitigation survey available on the town website. Residents and property owners are encouraged to participate in a survey about hazard mitigation. Uh, it's right on the uh, front page of the town website. Scroll down to the bottom. Uh, the, the towns of Abington, East Bridgewater, Easton, and Stoughton are collaborating with residents and stakeholders on an update of the town's natural hazard mitigation plan, also known as HMP. The effort relies on stakeholder and public input to come up with local strategies to mitigate natural hazards, reduce vulnerability, and adapt to our, uh, adapt to our changing climate. <coughs> the results of this planning process will inform future town spending on hazard mitigation and climate adaption. This survey is an opportunity for you as residents to share your concerns about natural hazards and their impacts to our town, and what you think our town should do to reduce vulnerability to natural hazards and the impacts of climate change. The survey is also available in a paper copy at the Senior Center, the Abington Public Library, and Town Hall. Boxes, boxes for completed surveys are, all, are in these locations as well. The survey will be open through December 31st, 2022, so New Year's Eve. Uh, that's all I have for announcements, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Kevin? Nothing. Tim? No, sir. And I have nothing. Um, anyone in the audience have anything to say about anything on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, vote to approve the minutes from November 14, 2022. Make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, introduction of new police officers, Chief. I just wanted to take a moment tonight and introduce uh, our newest officers to the APD. Uh, these officers graduated from the Northern Essex Community College Police Academy on October 7th of this year. Uh, they all started their field training program on October 11th, and they'll remain in their field training program until approximately mid-January, at which point they'll be assigned to a shift and authorized for solo patrol. All of these officers are Abington residents, which means they each have a vested interest in serving this community. Would you gentlemen stand up and I'll introduce you. We have Officer Sean Flannery. Officer Flannery is a 2004 graduate of North Quincy High School. 2013, he attended the EMS Academy in Quincy and was certified as an <coughs> EMT. Went on to work for Fallon Ambulance for a period of time as an EMT. And prior to joining the APD, he worked as a control representative for SS&C Technologies. We have Officer Robert Gervasi, Jr., 2017 graduate of Archbishop Williams High School. Robert attended uh, Massasoit Community College for a year before transferring to Westfield State University. And prior to joining the APD, he was a full-time student at Westfield State, pursuing his bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Next, we have Officer Andrew Resendiz, 2008 graduate of Portsmouth High School in Rhode Island. 
In 2012, he earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in criminal justice from Curry College. Worked for, as a police officer for the Mass Bay Community College for a period of time. Before joining the APD, he worked his last seven years as a police officer for the Bunker Hill Community College Police Department. And last but not least, Officer Ryan Francis, 2012 graduate of the South Shore Vocational Technical High School. 2013, he went on to attend uh, Bridgewater State College for a year before transferring to UMass Dartmouth. 2017, he received a Bachelor of Science degree from UMass Dartmouth in Management Information Systems. And prior to joining the APD, he's worked the last couple of years as a corrections officer for the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. Uh, we're excited to have these officers on board, and we look forward to seeing the positive impact they'll have on, on, on our community. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Representative Sullivan. She has some citations for these officers. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Good evening, Board. Uh, it is an honor to be here. Thank you for having us. I do have some citations for our new officers. And before I begin, I, I just want to say every bishop would like to be a cardinal. A little, a little pun there. Uh, graduating <laughs> from Cardinal Spellman, it's always been uh, our arch rivals and archies. So I had to throw that in. <laughs> all jokes, all jokes, uh, awesome. I promise. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, I, I so I do have so. a few citations here uh, for all four of you. I've met you. Uh, during the road race that we had in Abington. You guys, I think we're in the middle of the academy at that time. So you guys were all ready for the 5K. You did a great job. I think you beat me and several others, including Rick. I think he's in the audience tonight. Um, <coughs> But all seriousness, uh, I want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you for standing up to the plate and wanting to become officers. You know, Abington is a great town. Like you all know, you live here. I grew up here. I'm a wife of a police officer. My husband serves over in the city of Brockton. So I know what it is and what it takes for you and your family each and every day you go to work. So thank you so much. Um, and you will always have the support from a lot of us residents in the town of Abington. So I do have a citation for all four of you. I'm just going to read one just to preserve time because they all say the same thing. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offices sincere congratulations to all four of you in recognition of your commitment to protect and serve the town of Abington as an officer of the Abington Police Department. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all your endeavors. Given this 28th day of November 2022 at the State House of Boston, signed by the Speaker of the House, Ronald Marniano, and offered by your representative, Allison Sullivan. So congratulations and thank you so much and be safe. Thank you. Thank you again for your time. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Thank you, thank you. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys don't have to stay. Yeah, you can leave. <laughs> Despite what they told you. <laughs> All right. Discussion on disposition of options for North School and Center School. Scott, what do we have? So, um, I think we're at that next point. We do have some, um, or, or at least through our consultant who worked with us on um, community outreach on these projects, has suggested that we do have some interest in these um, school buildings. And um, the concept that we put forward when we were discussing the center school, which had a reuse of the property with 12 units, um, like one bedroom units of housing, no real change to the footprint, um, no change to the structure other than any upgrades needed, and returning most of the property back to the town, including in that particular case, the, the ball fields and the wooded areas. Um, though that concept seems to have um, be of interest to at least a couple of different organizations. So my question to this board is, is how do we want to proceed? Um, I think I had mentioned my, my thought would be, do we want to do any further um, outreach on this? Do we want to put a um, request 
four proposals together and put this property out to bid. Uh, I did say, you know, earlier I had mentioned that maybe, you know, I want to do a little research on exactly what was authorized in the past by town meeting and see if right. this is something that uh, we want to bring to town meeting. At the very least, I think if we're going to go forward, we probably want to go to town meeting to get some money for the consultants to um, help out um, as far as putting um, bid docs together, reviewing them with this board. Um, I think we'd obviously want to get um, get it right the first time, um, make sure that it, you know everything's included with what we want and that it's the best thing for the town. And then the other option is obviously if this board decides that that's not the way to go, um, then we'll be looking to put a warrant article together to get money uh, at least for the first part of it, which would be engineering to look into the demolition costs um, of the of the. Process. Do you have an estimate on what it would cost to uh, engineering and demo? Uh, the, the prices for demo that were done prior, um, back when you know probably three years ago, were over would bring us somewhere over a million and a half to two million dollars each. If, at it, in this current environment, yes. Um, it was, uh, I think, just uh, 750000 back then, just on hazmat uh, right. removal that would be per building. Um, so that, you know, probably, you know, uh, you know, that price has gone up, but the first thing we would do is it, we would have to bring on an engineer, which would be somewhere, you know, probably upwards of $300,000. Uh, to go and, and assist in putting that documentation together, um, finding out exactly what the uh, hazmat is that's got to be removed, how we would want it removed, bid it, and do construction administration during that. So the, you know, again, it'd probably be two different articles, one at this year's meeting, um, put it out to bid, and then the, the other option is, again, um, you know, if we feel it, it is the right project for us, then we can take the conceptual um, drawings that we had put together when we did the, uh, you know, the initial uh, community outreach and, and look to put 12 units of um, housing into each building. Uh, there'd be an affordable component. The, the developer would have to uh, file these as a 40B projects. They would, you know, the difference being that they would be uh, supported by the town, so the process would be a lot quicker. Uh, but they would still have to go in front of the Board of Appeals and file with Mass Housing um, to do that. Um, you know, we would be able to put restrictions if we wanted to go forward. We put restrictions on it as far as, uh, you know, there may be uh, whatever that percentage is that is affordable. We may want preference to veterans. We may want preference to seniors. We may want preference to folks who live in town. Um, there are certain restrictions, but we again we'd have to talk with our consultant on that. There's certain things that just aren't allowed to be done. Um, I know because I uh, question I had questions from residents about because I know from the survey we heard from a lot of seniors that they were looking to, for subsidized senior housing. Um, so is that something that is being uh, presented? To the developers everything's on the table at this point nothing's being presented so that's where we're at now is so up if with that decision on what is going to be presented if we were to put out an RFP then we would and correct me if I'm wrong we would be putting it out there and asking people to come back with their ideas well I, I think uh, no I think in this particular case we I think we well, have to establish well center school we yeah. definitely want to establish that it's on that footprint right. Oh but yeah, no. I think North School. I mean that that should just be open. And but I think it you know it does seem like that the two broad projects could go together. Um, and if we you know if the restrictions were that you know a percentage of the uh, or the affordable p component to it be restricted to seniors only at center school, we could put that in there. Um, we, we have the ability to put whatever we win. Just keeping in mind that whatever restrictions that we do put on or however we decide to craft this will obviously limit the interest or um, any, you know, I, I would not expect anyone to um, likely won't pay the town for this. Uh, that, you know, uh, at best in a situation like this, there's usually, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the 
um, successful bidder was asking for some sort of a subsidy from the town. They would get the buildings for nothing and then ask for subsidy also. And the alternative is, like Scott said, we go to town meeting, ask for $3 million, and tear them down and keep the property. Yeah. And, and again, you know, when I put that, that number is a guess, but, you know, considering it's not just hazmat removal, but it's removal of the buildings, cleanup of the property, the, um, there's a lot of, each has asphalt, and then it's whatever that reuse is going to be, that if we decided to just remove the buildings, um, if it's going to be parking, then there's going to be, you know, an area that's left for parking, or the park, or an accessible area, and then the, the decisions on how we want that to look when we're done what is, what is the ultimate it, it's obviously we don't want to just tear buildings down and leave holes in the ground um, so okay. there'll be a cost associated with that also so I guess another question I have so for us for the Board of Selectmen should we set a set a timeline for what we want to set for these developers potentially to what we're looking for on these properties the RFP will have a that will yeah, be laid out. Yeah, time. I think it's what we, what I need, <coughs> and what I think we want to decide is what we want to do the final project to look like, yeah. and what we want to do. Meaning, well, I think the first question is, does the board want to put out an RFP, or does the board want to keep the property? What What's a time frame to, if we were to turn them into housing? What do you think a time frame would be? Uh, we wouldn't have a, um, you know. Five years. Yeah, it'd be it, it. It is a process. I'd have to go to town meeting either way and get money for the consultant to help put this together, and then um, it'll be at least a year, um, probably for development and turnaround and selection, and then that person, that developer, would have it probably a year of permitting, through just through the town through the normal process. What would be a time frame to uh, demo them? Uh, it wouldn't be much, it'd be a couple of years. Um, we'd still, again, we'd have to go to town meeting for engineering. Um, they'd have to draw up their plans. We'd have to come up with whatever our final plan's going to be, and then we'd go out to bid and have to go to town meeting for that money. Um, and then it would be hiring a, a, a develop or a demolition company, whatever the case may be, to, so to I mean, follow through. Either way, it's a, nothing's happening right away, but... Uh, You're talking years. It's, it's going to be a couple of year process for anything. What's it cost us to upkeep of those buildings now? Is it going to, in that figure, going to go up for talking years? Well, I mean, you know, the, the, there's nothing worse than an empty building and an abandoned building. It's, you know, um, <coughs> it's an attractive nuisance to kids who want to break in or it, it's, you know, or create graffiti or, um, you know, it's just, it's not that we're going to pump money. We're not going to put a roof on it, and the roof's leaking. We're can we can we restrict the entire project to senior housing? We can put whatever we want for a restriction on it, but it's going to make a huge um, difference in the attractiveness of the project. Who's going to want to bid on it? That's okay. So that being said, we are still keeping true to the, the residents. Want to make sure we're preserving the footprint, the 13 acres of the center school property. It, I, I, if, if you wanted me to tell you what I think we I think should do tomorrow, it would be take the center school property um, and the north school property, put the buildings out, have um, everything that is considered, you know, especially, you know, it's easier to visualize the center school, I think, because we've looked at it so much, but the wooded area, the ballparks the 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 um, you know all that e and actually all the green area would be restricted to no keep disturbance yeah. yeah keep it intact the um, that the the whole back lot leading down and all the way including the belt ball field would be donated back to the town um, same thing at the north school is we would keep only what you need for parking for the new project and everything else donated back to the town uh, the project as we saw the schematic would allow for up to 12 units in each and other than maybe allowing some physical changes for ADA compliance 
um, I think we could keep it that way. So if we put it out like that and see what happens, um, you know, and then again, there'd be a, a minimum of 25% of the units. We could ask for more, uh, but we could say a minimum of 25% of the units would be affordable and we could ask for whatever restrictions we want to put on it. Um, that's where, you know, again, those restrictions make it difficult. Um, affordable is affordable, and a one bedroom unit is um, just, you know, naturally attractive to a certain um, demographic. Mass housing isn't going to like the idea that we're doing all one bedroom units. They want to see a mix when you do affordability. So, um, you know, I, there, there I, are some issues. I would uh, like to do the restriction to the footprint at Center School, but I think to make it more attractive, I would just say whatever they wanted to do at North School, because a, a developer may do them both because, okay, we're going to do only 12 units at Center School and they're probably not going to make any money on that for quite a while. But if they had free reign at North School, that they could maybe tear the building down, maybe do more, maybe add to the building or something like that, it would be different. So I would like to do center school restricted to the footprint, but north school just leave it open and see what we get for proposals. I think we're restricting it too much by just doing the footprint on both properties. And I definitely want to do just the footprint at center but I don't think it's as important at North School. If we did that, then we, we could then review the what we receive. Right, yeah, we, we don't, don't have, have to, to award. Well, you, can, you can also, I mean, yeah, there's always our, <coughs> we'll always have the ability to reject. We'll, um, if we do put it out, um, we do need to have a, a clear sense on what we want from the developer that would make it more advantageous. So what is it that we're ultimately looking for that's likely to make that developer more successful than the next developer. So things, you know, we, we need to we need to have a way that in our mind, um, if we say we pick on this project over this project, we have to be able to quantify that. And they should know what that is ahead of time. After, like, so we, the town, we reviewed the center school, we did a feasibility study, we, we got the information what we can and can't do or possible or what the residents want to do as center school I'm wondering and, and that was a process that we did to make sure that this is done right we're making sure that we're doing what the town wants and what the residents want I'm wondering why, why are we rushing the North School then if we're just lumping it together it's been like 10 years yeah I don't think I don't we're rushing <laughs> well first of all <laughs> like rushing. I said I don't believe a developer is only going to want to do 12 units or six or whatever the number is at center school and donate every, all the land back. It's just, in today's market, with what those buildings need, it's not feasible for but, a developer. But, but, just but the review that we've done for center school, why wouldn't we do the same for north school? That's, that, that, that's my question. Because it's going to be similar to school, just my opinion. I think it's going to be similar. Why waste the money? Like, what, what difference do you expect to hear? Well, the environment is different in those two areas. Right, which is why I think it was more important that we did have a center school, because we had all the land we wanted. It was, I think all five of us wanted to protect that land. Yes. And no school, is there anything we're looking to protect? I, know, I think we're just reviewing of, of traffic or... Well, I mean, that's town resources. They, they'll have to. That's well, all we, part of the permitting. That's process. all part of the permitting and that's proposals. Really, we I, I we may. Speak. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't okay. really speak on like water or traffic or anything. It's not my expertise. But they they have to go through that process. That they are going to have to talk to the experts and get the permit. Hmm. Um, as far as North School goes, mm -hmm. and and I will say that you know one thing we did say all along. Um, the process, uh, starting, you know, when we started talking about this with the Affordable Housing Trust, was we wanted to start with the center school because they were sister schools, and we expected that one that whatever was going to work from there. If it worked, we would do it with the North School. So it was our intention, um, you know, throughout 
um, there's like again like we said there's always that ability that if we put something out there I mean it's you know you, this board will have another chance or two um, to look at anything that is the ultimate you know final document before it goes out to bid um, <coughs> people will still have an opportunity to weigh in on it and then ultimately um, when something's approved they go like like I said it's it, they go through the normal permitting of, uh, process where uh, there'd be whether well, you know board of appeals meetings and or planning board meetings um, so people have their chance to make their opinions known at that time too it's been so long I we got to not sit on our hands we just gotta we got to keep moving forward we're not making any decision on tonight on what the final project will look like but you heard Scott we're talking five years down the line before we're done yeah those buildings are not gonna get in better shape in the next five years they just, it's only gonna get worse and it's dangerous that we have them there now. Yeah, I, I think we, we, we put out an RFP and see what happens. I mean, we'll see it and then we can agree or reject it at that time. I mean, I don't think any more studies or any more throwing any more money at it's going to change. If we put anything. another committee together, it's going to be a year, two years before we get something back from them. Now we could possibly be seven years out before something's done. I mean, I think it's. If a developer took those, I think it's probably close to five years by the time everything's finished. So what do we need to do? Well, um, I think Scott needs to um, check uh, town meetings yeah. to see what we're authorized to do. Tim and I think that town meeting did authorize to. I think it was 2019 authorized. I know we did the authorize the Board of Selectmen to, to split the center school center land school. and or sell the whole thing and and sell it. And I believe North School was part of that in, um, that Warren article. If not, it was the next one. If so if that's it. done, then what we would need tonight, assuming that's correct, and I, I believe it is also, but assuming that's correct, we would need a motion tonight for Scott to move forward with the process to do an RFP. RFP on both properties. Do we need to be specific on the RFP or no? No. I, I would. I will bring the RFP back to this board well before, it, more than once likely, I would before it goes out to have board. the motion be um, to Scott start Scott working, on, start it. working mm -hmm. on it and mm -hmm. the RFP would be approved by us. So I'll make, I'll make that motion right now depend, um, depending on um, town meetings. I'll second. Last town meeting vote. What is the time frame for the RFP? I'll check with my with the consultant. It may be depending on how busy they are. We're probably looking right around town meeting time, anyways. Before we get it back before town meeting. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be able to. It probably wouldn't be ready, and then they're depending on the cost associated with it. I may have to wait until. The spe uh, doing you know some sort of a special within the annual to fund whatever we need for it. So, um, but I'll have a better you know before the twelfth I'll have a better feeling from what the consultant feels like we can do. So there's a motion. Did someone second that? Yeah, Kevin did. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, the purchase of Zero Orchard Lane. Um, want to explain this one to us? Uh, yeah, quite simply, this is. Um, well, I have to go get you the. Uh, as you recall, at town meeting, uh, we uh, we were authorized to purchase Zero Orchard Lane, and this is really just you guys voting to sign the. Um, the quick claim deed um, and you'll be able to read it in the motion but it's pursuant to the vote taken under article 5 of the 22 <coughs> special town meeting to acquire the property located on Orchard Lane from Gregory O'Neill the said property to be held under the care custody and control of the Conservation Commission under the provisions of general law chapter 40 C and to execute and authorize the chair to execute on behalf of the board any and all acceptances certificates settlement statements and any and all other documents necessary. Um, so you just need to make, 
just the top one. The Conservation Commission will be meeting later this week to do the same thing because it's going into their care and custody. So we just need you to um, formalize it. And this will allow us, we'll send the money over and do the transfer. So I'd like to make a motion pursuant to the vote taken under Article 5 of the September 27, 2022 Special Town Meeting to acquire the property located on Orchard Lane from Gregory O'Neill, said property to be held under the care, custody, and control of the <coughs> Conservation Commission under the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 8C, and to execute and to authorize the Chair to execute on behalf of the Board any and all acceptances, certificates, settlements, statements, and any and all other documents necessary or convenient to accomplish the foregoing acquisition. All second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Number five, we have an update from Adam Gunn, a veteran service agent. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'll just take a few minutes of your time today. Uh, talk about a few updates from the veterans office the most the first one I'm going to talk about is the one I'm most excited about a new veteran service assistant Martha Hi. <laughs> oh, that's my boss um, <laughs> so thank you so much for having us and allowing us to be a part of this meeting tonight um, as he said my name is Martha I'm the new assistant um, so I'll primarily be working with the program called chapter 115 so that's normally geared towards low-income veterans or dependents um, and the need-based program it's dependent on income and assets so there's different limits depending on whether you're single or you're not or how many people are in the household so there's a lot of math <laughs> associated with it but essentially we always encourage like whether you think you qualify or not the best way to figure it out is to just try so our offices are not joined yet <laughs> soon to come so I'm downstairs like if you walk inside I'm the first door on the right Adams upstairs you can visit either one of our offices if you have any questions or you can call us um, so essentially we just want to make sure that if there's anyone that needs help that they feel like they can get it like not just to sit there and just suffer alone because sometimes it's hard to ask for help you know because it's not easy but considering how much like the veteran community has contributed to you know our freedom it's only right for us to be able to give back to them so that's essentially what we do so whether we can do it with a monthly benefit or not there's also like medical assistance that's provided too so some way somehow we can probably work something out but again we're just here to let you guys know and everybody know that we're here and you know there's people out there that are ready to support you um, so just reach out and we'll be here for you <laughs> and that's all that I got for tonight <laughs> thank, you, Martha. Thank, you. thank you love Martha <laughs> she's been with a uh, with uh, veteran services since August 16th of this year <coughs> very welcome addition uh, we recently had the veterans uh, celebration we had 75 veterans show up to the Council on Aging on November 9th uh, thanks to the support of Air Amy Barrett and her incredible staff the Council on Aging we had 32 nonprofits community groups and veteran friendly businesses set up for information tables for the first hour and then Richie and Michelle the staff at the Council on Aging put an incredible meal together uh, the high school band came out and played patriotic music as they were getting out of their vehicles we had all the department heads Scott uh, right at the entrance clapping when they came in um, the middle school students came and read poems that they had written uh, the elementary students had all written cards that we had on every table uh, that they came in to sit down with we passed the leftover cards to Colony Center and to the VA uh, we had cream here in Abington who came in and donated uh, the dessert uh, Susan and Kate connections came in gave us a cake and then she also made 60 to go cupcakes so each one of the veterans could um, take cupcakes home project 351 with our high school um, Hannah Tyrell and Jack Regan from project 351 went to local uh, businesses in the area and we had over 30 donations of gifts that we were able to give away to the veterans that showed up that day so thank you to um, all those community groups the businesses and the volunteers that uh, supported and made this possible it was an incredible event so thank you 
Uh, veteran stories, um, our office is also part of the Abington High School. Uh, we're still trying to get veterans that would like to have their story told. We have students that want to sit down and interview veterans, hear about their stories, and then write them about them. So if you're interested in having your story told or interested in telling a story for another veteran, please reach out to our office. Uh, there's still Toys for Tots box located in Town Hall, the Fire Department, and the Police Department. Those are going to be around until December 17th, so there's still time to bring a toy. Uh, the monthly Veterans Breakfast is still happening in Martin's Restaurant. Around 60 veterans are showing up every month to Martin's on the first Wednesday of each month. The half of the restaurant that uh, Freddie Villa allows us to take over and use has only has seats for 35 veterans. We fill those up every single month since March and he takes the other, you know, the total 60 plus veterans that walk in that day and he gives free meals to every single one of them for service of our country. Uh, recently, the Abington American Legion and the Abington VFW have partnered together to every three months give a financial donation to Martin's Restaurant in their support for what he's doing for our veterans. I just want to thank Martin's Restaurant and the local businesses that are doing so much for our veterans. Please get out there and support our local businesses that support our veterans. And then we'll be bringing a new article to the next town meeting for a veteran tax work off abatement program. The veteran tax work off program would be open to any veterans or the spouse of a disabled veteran or a deceased veteran. Uh, and there's no age restrictions like there is with the senior tax write-off or the senior tax work-off. So anyone who owns a property and pays real estate tax to the town of Abington, the program would allow a veteran or spouse to work with our office and log their hours and earn up to $1,500 off their property tax credit. Um, this would be paid at the rate of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts minimum wage. Um, minus the withholdings of course uh, but this would allow our office to do a lot more for our veterans obviously help them financially for those who need and hopefully accomplish more uh, future goals and dreams um, lastly speaking of dreams uh, one of the visions of the future for the veteran services is to someday have a veteran transportation vehicle available to abington veterans and widows who need transportation to and from medical appointments uh, with the tax work off abatement program hopefully uh, we could use the abatement program if it gets approved and or assign volunteers to schedule uh, to volunteer on certain days. I've had many people come and tell me they would be absolutely willing to support a program like this. Uh, it's a long road to accomplish something like this. Uh, I'm scheduled to be mentored by a couple other nearby local towns uh, as well as the DAV who has a great ride program and works all over uh, the country giving rides to veterans. Um, Shortly before Veterans Day, um, we found a vehicle um, that's going to be donated to the Veterans Services Office. It's a 2014 MV1 uh, with only 18,000 miles on it. An MV1 is a, a mobility ventures vehicle and was built for one purpose. Um, that's a wheelchair accessible vehicle made for transportation. There isn't even a front passenger seat on it. Uh, there's an extended either eight foot ramp or a shorter ramp mode that comes out of the outside of the vehicle with a push of a button. There's two seats in the back. Um, Rockland Veteran Services currently received a brand new donated vehicle. Uh, so they no longer have use for this vehicle that they were currently running a, currently running a transportation program through. Uh, so again, it's a long road to get this up and running, but it's a future goal. The vehicle is currently in progress and being donated over to the town of Abington in our office. Um, unless you have any questions, that's all I have for tonight. I'd just like to mention, I was in Martin's restaurant on a Wednesday when it was not the Veterans Wednesday, and this gentleman walked in and asked about the free breakfast, and the waitress said, it's not today. And Fred Villa was there and said, sit down and order what you want. So, even uh, even on the day that it's not, Fred takes care of people, so he does. he's he a good asset to this town. He really is. When we first started doing this and the word first started getting out about the veterans breakfast, he would have 5.30 in the morning, he'd have vets showing up already. To, he heard about a free breakfast and he still took care of them. Even before the door opened, he yeah. would bring them in and cook them a meal. So. If there was Probably another organization or business owners in town that wanted to donate to Myron's restaurant to, to help? The cost in this. Are they okay to reach out to your absolutely. office? Absolutely. Thanks. He may try and turn you down like he did the BFW and the Legion, but, but that's absolutely. why if they call you, you 
Absolutely. Yes, please. please. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Anything Thank you. else, Rod? No questions. Adam, you're doing a great job. We appreciate Thank it. You, Thank you, Adam. Yes, Thank sir. You. Appreciate it. Okay, welcome discussion. Welcome aboard, Martha. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> discussion and vote to consent to KP Lar representation of the social vocational regional social regional vocational school district. What's that all about, Scott? Well, as you know, <coughs> you're, you're aware, KP Law represents um, general counsel for the town of Abington, and they've recently been requested to um, represent South Shore Regional Vocational School District School Committee on some um, legal items. And as a requirement, um, they need permission or KP Law is seeking permission from this board just because it's. Um, I, I don't see a problem with it. Um, I, I don't, obviously I can't foresee everything, but I don't foresee an issue where our um, legal paths would be so crossed right. that um, this would become a problem. And if it did, certainly um, we could avail ourselves of other counsel, or they could. So do you need a vote for that? Yes. Would someone like to make a motion on this? I think the motion could just simply be that you um, consent to KP's law representation of both Abington and the um, Social Oak Tech School District. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And now, what yeah. everyone waits for. Sign this. In, um, after this gets signed, can you just maybe get it. that red folder to work its way back? Did you already sign this one too? That's what's in the red folder. Are you sure that you don't have the deed in there? No, we. The deed to what? The town? <laughs> Are we selling the town? I think we just sold the town. We are now West Rockland. West Rockland? West Rockland. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Send that down and get it back. All right, so like I said, the most. This is the anticipated part, waiting for. And part of the whole meeting. <laughs> um, all right, so the fire department is currently experiencing some mechanical issues. Uh, two out of the three town ambulances. One has an engine issue. Uh, it appears that it's covered under the warranty, but it's awaiting parts, so it's unavailable until those parts come in. Um, our second ambulance is having issues with the computer chip. Um, these are both fairly new um, ambulances, so it's kind of a surprise that we're having these problems, but both issues do seem to be covered <coughs> under warranty, um, but it's just unfortunate they're both out of service. Uh, they've been borrowing ambulances from other towns. Um, town of Bridgewater actually has uh, generously agreed to loan us a spare ambulance for now. Uh, the fire chief and I are going to actually um, work on preparing an article for the upcoming annual town meeting uh, to begin the process of replacing our third ambulance, which is the oldest one. Uh, we expect that to cost somewhere around $400,000. They're, um, like everything else, difficult to get right now. It's probably a long process, but we'd like to start it this year at the annual. <coughs> uh, after a long and exhaustive search, our DPW director, John Stone, has finally been able to secure a bucket truck for the town. Um, as you might recall, this was an item that was authorized by town meeting uh, back in April. The old bucket truck had had to be put out of service due to the many mechanical issues. <coughs> so you'll likely see um, the new truck and their crew out trimming some branches, changing lights, repairing signs. Um, they'll be swapping out the banners that we, um, the holiday banners. Um, interesting, they, they'll also be um, installing four frost centers, uh, sensors throughout the town. Um, I guess these frost will measure, the, the sensors will measure the temperature of the roads and then signal, um, send a signal off to the DPW to help them sort of uh, schedule their salting operations. Um, they, they'll also be out there um, working with Abington Celebrates. Apparently, we have some new holiday decorations for uh, the upcoming uh, big weekend. Uh, town meeting had authorized uh, borrowing for up to $100,000 for this equipment, but I'm glad to announce that John was able to get us a reliable, um, slightly used truck for $65,000. Good job, John. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and these trucks are workhorses, so it's, it's good. It's been a while that they haven't had one, so I'm glad we finally got that taken care of. Um, this Wednesday, November 30th at 7 p.m., Finance Committee will meet in this room. This is kind of the start off to the FY24 budget process. Um, this week's meeting will be a, just an overview of the process, explanation of of uh, the town's revenue sources, a discussion on how we come up with our expenses and, and put our budgeting together, um, reviewing our long and short term borrowing, and then um, setting the schedule for the budget season. Uh, tonight was kind of the kickoff for this board. Um, we will be, you know, Adam was the first, and I guess alphabetically he comes first, but um, bringing our department heads to give you um, an operational update. Some of them will give you a broad overview of their, um, their current budget situation and, and requests for next year. Um, others will just come in and, and sort of let you know what's been going on in their department. Um, the only other thing to mention, or a couple other things to mention, one is um, the uh, lot of calls and, and, and um, comments on our energy aggregation program. Uh, so just wanted to mention, you know, this, the, some people think that this is something that we just all of a sudden decided to do. However, um, it, this is something that the town had entered into back in 2019. 2017, I think. Well, I think it, it initially, <coughs> yeah, the, the initial request was 2017. Um, they went out to bid. They had meetings on it. Uh, a, a vendor was contracted with in 2019. Um, that was a three-year contract with um, an options for renewal. So we're in that contract period. In I think at one or two points in time that they did actually successfully come up with some savings that they put out to the town. Um, this is the first time that they've had anything since I've been on, and um, it seems to, you know, again, in reaction to what we are hearing are going to be some pretty significant rate increases in January, uh, we felt that this was the best thing to do for um, the whole of the community. Uh, that being said, uh, we do have all of the information for this up on the website. If anybody's having trouble, feel free to reach out. Um, there's some contact numbers on our website, and um, there's also some links. But uh, on our next meeting on uh, December 12th, uh, representatives from Colonial Power Group will be here. Um, you know, so they'll be able to answer any questions directly, which I think will be very helpful to have them here and they'll go over the process and um, you know we can um, certainly uh, have a further discussion on it then thank you scott i know i know i've i don't know about you guys but i know i've definitely heard from a lot of residents just so thank you scott yep. uh, and i know there was one thing that um i also wanted to clarify because mm -hmm. i i got a few phone calls about it um residents asking about the notification that went out uh, and residents were questioning uh, whether it should be an opt-in or an out, or opt out. Uh, according to the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities, um, the process is that residents have to opt out, not opt in. Correct. So that's, right. so that's, that's not why, an Abington thing. Yes. Yeah, it's not an Abington thing, it's a Massachusetts <coughs> thing. So that's why uh, I know that some people were uh, confused or concerned or whether or not it says, oh, should it be opt-in or opt-out? No. It, According to the state, we are we are following opt out, and we're you know and we're cognizant that you know it's a it's a long term thing. So um, at times, the the rate is going to be lower, and if we do see that the rates um, are kicking up and it's no longer favorable, we will send out um, just through probably code red emails and on our website just alerts that you know you may want to take a look at your bill and it may be a chance to opt out because you don't have to, you can opt out at other times. So. Can again, you opt in after you opt out? Uh, we would have to, that would be a question for Colonial. The right here. There, there are, if it's available to all Abington residents, mm -hmm. um, but you, if so, if you're not in the program right now, you can opt in. Um, there's a number that y you can call uh, to opt in. Yeah, so the, the, the notification went out to people who are currently just basic rate um, subscribers through NSTAR. 
or through national national grid. grid. National. So meaning that if if you've already picked somebody else, you for your supplier, correct? You likely did not get this um, in the mail, and right. you don't have to do anything if you're happy with your supplier. One thing, uh, another interesting thing that we'll go over when Colonial's here at your next meeting is that there is a link um, and there is a website out there that would allow you, if you just want to go in, um, look at what is available to you in your area code, or for the obviously for um, Abington, um, for all the different suppliers that you can avail yourself of. There's maybe a dozen or so with different rates in different terms. Um, you don't have to go with this one. Um, you could pick your own. Um, you're welcome to shop. And, and again, we'll, I think it's best to explain that when we have Colonial here. And just for people watching at home, if you didn't get the letter, um, if you wanted to opt in to the program, um, I have the number right up here. Uh, you can call 866-968-8065. Uh, and asked to join the Abington's program. And we're, you know, just for residents, we are doing this to, we know that, you know, we're, we're going into some financial difficult times and we don't know, uh, you know, wh what energy costs are gonna be like. This is an, an effort by the town of Abington to help relieve um, any burden that could come our way. Very good. Anything else? I uh, just want to congratulate um, uh, the new, the newly appointed Sergeant Sanders. Yes. They, they uh, had a, a, a badge pinning on um, Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon. Um, I don't know who does that late on a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, but they did it. It was exciting, and I was glad I was part of it. So congratulations. And, and He's been on for quite a while. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it's nice to see um, he has a great resume. Yeah. Um, some uh, time in the Air Force, I believe it was. And uh, it's just nice to see that these, um, you know, that these uh, men and women are uh, getting into some leaders leadership positions. It's great to see the new faces coming on board today. Um, very positive direction that I see the department going in, so it's all very exciting. And they're from Abington. And, and they're from Abington. It's nice to see yeah. Abington faces, yes. Which is great to see. Anything else, gentlemen? Matt, Scott, the Center and North School, I mean, we're still plowing, sanding, salting, maintenance there. I mean, is there anything we could cut costs on any of that stuff? I'll ask John Stone. I think it, it's mostly, you know, we always want, you know, emergency access to the building. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I can imagine yeah. it's probably a, a lot of, you know, man hours to, to do it, so. Mm. Yeah, I'll Does, check with him and see if there's any, any savings. But again, it's, the fire department needs to have access all the, throughout the winter. Okay. Do I have a motion, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. Tim? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in favor. All right. Unanimous. Thank you all. We'll see you December 12th.